Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Today, let's take a look at some great free iPhone apps. So among the thousands of applications at the iPhone App Store, there are some that are completely free. Now, a lot of these are junk, but some are actually pretty good. So let's take a look at some of the free iPhone apps I've been using recently. So let's start by taking a look at Google Earth. And Google Earth is kind of just like you would see it on a Mac. It presents the entire Earth via satellite photos and allows you to jump around, do searches, and even use the GPS in your device to find out where you currently are. You can go ahead and pinch and squeeze to expand, attract your view, even rotate it around. So it's pretty neat. I'll let you decide whether it's a toy or a useful tool. So next up is iTalk from Griffin. Now there are a variety of free and pay audio recording iPhone apps out there. Uh, this one is ad supported. You can see an ad at the bottom. Um, and the thing about iTalk is it has a lot of features. It lets you select quality, uh, start a recording, and then you can pause the recording and pick it up later on. So it's easy to record short memos or maybe an entire university lecture. Uh, when you're done, I like the fact you can go back in and uh, edit notes and information about the recording and then transfer it to your Mac using a piece of software that you download for your Mac as well. Now here's one to keep an eye on. It's called Fring. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to chat over a lot of instant messaging networks so you can avoid the SMS over AT&T if you like. You can also make calls over voice over IP networks like Skype. So I've entered in my Skype account information here and I have the ability through a paid Skype account to make calls out on Skype. So I can actually dial a number and use Skype rather than AT&T to make a call. Now I can only do this over a Wi-Fi network. So I can do it at home or at the office. But that's going to save me a lot of minutes every month. The quality is so-so and the software is really buggy. So it's not something that's going to replace your regular phone just yet. But it's worth keeping an eye on. Now here's one called Translator. Now Translator does exactly what you may think. It allows you to go ahead and select a starting language, a target language, and then go ahead, type some text, and translate. Now it's pretty useful for translating things you may be reading but not that great for helping you speak a foreign language because it doesn't give you a pronunciation guide. But still, it's free. Here's one that no iPhone web developer should be without. It's called simply Fonts. And what it does is it gives you a complete list of all the fonts that are available on the iPhone and it includes the ability to actually see how they look on the iPhone. So very useful for designing your CSS for iPhone web pages. So Wikipedia is another self-explanatory application. It basically allows you to look up things on Wikipedia. Now it does this fast enough in a nice enough way to make me prefer it over using the wikipedia.org website through Safari on the iPhone. Now no internet user should be without a Facebook account and no Facebook user with an iPhone should be without the Facebook iPhone app. It basically allows you to access almost your entire Facebook account and even some different applications. It's very useful and great for updating your status and checking your friend's status updates. There's also a LinkedIn application if you use that network instead. And of course a great way to find free or pay iPhone apps is to go to the MacMost iPhone apps directory. And there you can go ahead and search for things that are new, things that have been updated. You can search by price so you can see the free stuff first. Give it a try. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now. <music>